Hello everybody and welcome to my workshop once again. I'm just going to do a little short uh, video now um, which I'll call Anatomy of the Three Jaw Chuck. Um, I commented on some other people's videos about um, you know the, the reasons why a, uh, um, a three jaw has a certain amount of run out and um, some people don't quite seem to to get why you get run out and why the run out varies at different um, holding diameters. So I thought it might be instructional to take a three jaw apart and to um, just take a look inside. So I'll shift the other camera and let's get going. Okay, what I've got here um, is the Pratt Chuck that uh, came with my Harrison L5. Um, so it's got an integral L00 uh, mounting and my lathe was an ex-schools lathe and particularly if I just come in a little tighter here you can see there's quite a few battle scars on this thing the jaws are belled they got a little bit of rock in them and I don't know how well this is gonna show up I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust in here because this thing, I really don't use it anymore. But yeah, down in there you can see there's a lot of dings in the taper there where, and that's after I improved it, that people were not, not good about um, clearing this thing out before mounting it. Anyway, the first thing to do is I'll pull the jaws out and... Uh, the lathe didn't come with a chuck key, so this is a self-made key from a good few years ago now. You see more evidence of um, abuse on this chuck. Somebody probably had the jaw um, hanging too far out of the chuck for the uh, so it was only really hanging on the one tooth and they broke that off. So let's crack this thing open. I'm using a, an old t-shirt on here. I've got um, a box of uh, old t-shirts. The um, companies uh, sell them as um, by the kilo as shop rags. If you're lucky they actually supply cotton t-shirts that are genuinely cotton t-shirts and not uh, nylon or nylon mix which really aren't very absorbent okay, so let's, uh... Okay, so you can see we've got the the back of the chuck off. Like I said before, it's an integral mount which shortens things up. So it's got uh, cutouts for the uh, the bevel gears. And let's just get a screwdriver. And we'll pull the screws out. And these things have just got a, uh, a straight pin on them that runs in a groove. It 
retains the, uh, the bevel gears driven by the key. So there's the uh, the groove that the pin runs in to maintain the the gear in the chuck body. Now you'd normally want to keep everything in the order um, that it, you know, keep everything in the same position as it was originally. This chuck is in such bad shape that I'm nearly, well, really not bothered. Um, I don't know if you can see here, in fact, but this this thing's actually cracked from. Uh, over tightening, that one's got a crack in it too, and that's the only one that hasn't. Now the scroll sh should more or less fall out, but there's a certain amount of gunk in this chuck. And that really is all there is to a three jaw chuck. Or indeed to a scroll chuck. Because uh, you get scroll chucks in two jaw, three jaw, four jaw. And I know a few people who are um, fans of a four jaw self centering, um, reckoning that you can, you can use it on round bar just fine. Uh, but if you're doing a load of work with um, square bar, it's the ideal thing. And of course you get uh, six jaw. So now, your jaws are engaging with the scroll. And there's a certain amount of backlash. And this scroll, when it was made, will hopefully be of an accurate pitch and the radius is of course changing this is a tighter radius than out here and the teeth on the chuck jaws have to be able to accommodate all the different pitches, you know, it's fitting here and it's fitting here, so it has to fit sort of badly at all the different positions. So that's where part of your imprecision on these comes from, is the fact that the, the tooth shapes are a compromise. The next thing is how accurately is this scroll located in the chuck body? You know, there's got to be some running clearance in there. So, you can see that this scroll was actually quite difficult to get in there because the tolerance between its bore and the register it turns on is quite tight. And on some chucks it's going to be much sloppier. Now when you've got one of these bevel gears in there, in an ideal world when you turn this bevel gear, you're purely rotating the scroll. But of course there's a force that's simply in this direction. You know, it's not really in this direction, it's just sideways. 
and it's being constrained on the register that causes it to rotate. But any slop between the scroll and the register means that when you turn this it wants to move sideways. This is why if you go around all three points you get so tight on this part then you put the same force on the key at the next one and it's kind of whereas where the scroll's been jammed this way and binding when you go around to the next point it's moving it this way so it pulls it out of that bind and allows it to rotate a little bit more you go around to the third position you can do it a little bit more and when they grind the jaws when they build the chuck they use one of these as a master and quite often the chuck body is marked with a master position and I'm told that if there isn't a master position marked you use opposite the label as the position that was tightened so whatever way it offset the the scroll should be consistent if you use that key and that's the position in which the uh, the, uh, the jaws are uh, ground so that should get you your best centering nice. now they do sell um, precision versions of three jaw chucks and what they'll have done is selectively assembled scroll plates and bodies to get the tightest possible um, clearance that still allows free movement and uh, you know make sure that the the, the keys and the, the gears are, are, are nice and nice and tight so that you get a more accurately um, recentering chuck. Now as you hope that the pitch of the scroll is consistent but of course they wear and due to the way that the, the teeth contact they tend to wear unevenly but they should in theory be repeatable and this is where your soft jaws come in that if you bore your soft jaws at a given diameter you should get repeatable centering at that diameter now there's another way that the um, the concentricity of the, the chuck can be affected and that's that this spiral should always be centered on this diameter on this register but it's possible to actually have it you know if, if this wasn't running true when this was machined um, and I imagine that that's the the order in which you would machine it because that's the, the locating register your scroll could be doing this and your three jaws are going to be doing this and wherever whatever diameter they were ground at will run true but all the other diameters will be off and um, you know th these are the things that make the difference between a cheap chuck and a good chuck although if you're lucky the cheap chucks are often quite good <laughs>